Okay. Good morning. Good morning from Pinnock Quilting from our personal showroom and welcome to another Facebook Live. We are a little bit late this morning only because you can't say no when a customer calls you up and follows up from a live from our demonstration yesterday and says that they want to go ahead with their order. We definitely take those phone calls. So apologies for being a little bit later than usual. Uh, yeah, even later than usual. We're not always on time, but actually, the genuine reason for being late. So welcome, I'm Liz, and Pete, my husband, is behind the camera as usual. And if you haven't seen our Facebook Live before, welcome. Uh, we do tips, techniques, and little updates about long arm quilting. And we hope that you find it useful. Today, it's a very rainy and blustery day here in Pershore. We had a lot of storms last week and I know that we do some more so wherever you are whether you're in the UK or elsewhere in the world we hope that you are nicely tucked up inside and watching our video and enjoying some quilting so we've got some new things to introduce you to this week and uh, hopefully you can hear us we normally do a little test of our mics and make sure the video is playing so Pete have we got yeah Derek's people can hear us? Oh, morning great. Derek and Good morning, Derek and Sandra from uh, Northern Ireland, and, and I'm sure you've had a few storms over there. And so Carol well. Beely in a wet and chilly stockport. Oh, wet and chilly, yes. <laughs> Hoping that nobody suffered any serious damage from the storms. We've no. had two big storms in the UK this week. We have. We had Storm Dudley, and being from around Birmingham myself, I can say Storm Dudley. Um, but that is, that wasn't actually too bad. It was Storm Eunice that proved to be a pretty nasty storm. And we well remember the uh, the previous time when there was a bad storm, don't you, Pete? Pete's just getting some uh, of our new products out of the box tomorrow. Right? And uh, when dear Michael Fish said, do not worry about the hurricane that is imminent, back in the light, late 1980s, when I was in Basingstoke, and I awoke to find that where I was working at IBM, they told us to go home because the whole like, windows have been blown out. Anyway, it wasn't as bad as that, which is good. So we are going to pursue um, our Facebook Live this morning, and hopefully you'll learn something that you didn't know about. Because today, oh, have I left my, um, what have I done with my, okay. no, um, what my, have got my, uh, have you seen my manuals? Oh yeah, but I've got some manuals as well. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you very much. It's like a magic trick. It's like a magic trick. Look, look, I've got some rope. I've got some rope. This is my live demonstration. You're all intrigued now, aren't you? But before I do my live demonstration, I need to find my manuals. Pete, you put the manuals down somewhere. I'm looking for them. Oh, no, are they just behind the tape? On the uh, cutting table. So this, this rope, I actually bought it for our garden gate. I'm going to do some rope work. Look. All right, all right. I'll put them safely down on the table. Just on the table. There you go. She who hides can find, as my mother would say. Right, so, Jenny, Jenny, who has one of our Amaras, also for whom we bought some lovely vintage sewing machines, and I bought some absolutely whopping needles for them uh, this week, some spare needles absolutely enormous they can do some serious damage you wouldn't want to get one of those through your thumb in by accident anyway jenny very kindly sent some manuals through and we have some original manuals fantastic absolutely fantastic so we have a 30 inch long arm in our showroom and we have a lock stitch machine for a twin needle and we have a lock stitch machine for a uh, glove making machine Fantastic. And also a um, one that does buttonholes. And they are really make really interesting reading. But one of the fascinating things in here is it tells you about the twist on thread. So for those of you who are not familiar with the twist on thread, this is actually really useful information. So I'm just going to show you on page page six of this lovely singer sewing machine booklet. In here it has a little picture of twist on thread and I'm going to demonstrate for you. Can you see that? Yep. There we go. I'm going to demonstrate with this rope. This rope has a twist, of course. 
So what you need to do, if when you're, when you're sewing on a long arm like this, it's quite useful to know what, which way your thread twists. So you're gonna, I'm gonna do it the right way around for you. I think this is right, Pete. Yep. You're, this is my left hand. This is my left hand, it's got my ring on it. This is my right hand. What you do is hold the thread, like it says in the manuals. If you've got an old vintage sewing machine, you'll have this bit booklet probably. Hold it in your left hand and then twist the, the thread with your right hand. If you twist it to the left and the thread tightens, you've got a left twist. And if you turn it to the right and it goes looser, it's a right twist. So this one is tightening. It's a left twist, okay? Which most thread is, okay? So most sewing thread is a left twist. And we have a look around. We've got a lot of thread. I've got a lot of thread, obviously. Over the years, I've acquired quite a lot of thread. And most sewing machine thread that we've got is a left twist. And most of the cones and the spools that we've got are, well, cones like this, most of it is wound on, so it comes off clockwise, and it's left twist. But occasionally, you may find that it's wound anti-clockwise. If you're having problems, and pitch in if you, if you have any opposing views on this, feel free to add to the debate. If you find that you're having an issue, you might, and it's coming unwound, um, because it's maybe wound and it's coming off anti-clockwise, maybe, even if it's a cone, you might find that it's improved by putting the, the cone upside down. Obviously, if you've got a regular spool, okay, all my spools are over there, but if you've got a regular spool, that's very easy to do, but with cones, it's less obvious that you put it that way up, right? There we go. That is the tip of the day. Thanks to Jenny, because I had a quick look as soon as she sent this through. I say quick look, I was reading it. And uh, I was reading this and I thought, ah, oh, yeah, of course it's in all the manuals. Good old information from the 1930s. Nothing changes. And it's even got in here the same diagram, by the way, on tension, exactly the same diagram that we provide you with when we send out a lot of information on the handy pills along arms. See, nothing is really new. It tells you all about regulating your tension and getting a perfect stitch. Very good. Any comments on that? Too? I haven't seen any. Um, They're just mesmerised. At the moment. Just mesmerised. <coughs> just that's just sinking in. Janet Bevan says it's Z or S twist. Oh yeah, that that is true. Z or S twist. I have heard of that. Um, Z or S twist. It's how it looks because whether it's um, goes to the right or the left. But so, I think it's just really useful though to know that you can look at it. Yeah, that's because of how it looks when you look at this. Whether it's Z, Z, mm -hmm. or S, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really useful to know that you can hold it and twist it and test it yourself. I thought that was just great information. So Marianne says, do you think the upside down trick will really help with my thread, which ends up really twisted at the needle when I come to the end of the pass? Try it. Let us try know. it, but I suspect actually, Maria, if it's twisting that much, there's probably another cause. I would think about um, needle size, perhaps. Either needle size, but also, Marianne, think about it. I would also consider whether your bobbin tension is maybe too tight and your top tension is also too tight correspondingly, and you're compressing the thread through the tension discs. Maybe also look at that. Feedback to us, Marianne. I haven't tried the upside down spool trick, but I know that some people say that it works. Right, well it's been an exciting week here, hasn't it, Pete? 
Always, always. <laughs> yes, it has. I'm very excited actually because because a new employee, a new full time in our quilting employee, Mark, started this week, halfway through the week. As he said, as he left on Friday, he's got a whole weekend to forget everything he's learned. <laughs> it's good that he's got a similar sense of humour to Pete and I. I think this is a, this is a good thing. This is a very good thing. So yeah, we're absolutely delighted. Uh, operations manager, and he will be taking on some of the responsibilities that Pete has been doing. Because Pete, between Pete and I, we pretty much do everything. Uh, but actually, uh, it's going to be a, a real, real benefit. So uh, yeah, we look forward to welcoming him to uh, taking part in many of the activities of uh, receiving and dispatching goods. So your pallets, if you're if you've ordered in the last week or so, the uh, pallets that you will be receiving, some of them will have been wrapped by Mark. Marianne says that Mark has a good chance of being employee of the month. <laughs> He does. He does. You're assuming, Marianne, that we don't award it to ourselves, of course. But yeah, Pete's often been employee of the month. Yeah. Yes. He he does. He does a good. Congratulations, Pete. Thank you very much, Pete. It's a it's a honorary award that um, and also employee of the year has traditionally been awarded to Pete. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, it's a bit like your cricket club, actually, Pete. Can I just mention? Can I just mention the? Can I just mention the? I don't know what you're going to mention. So how can I possibly answer that question? The new, our new employee, has got an award with his name on it. Pretty much. That was quite funny. He's quite a successful cricketer. Thank you, Mark. And I'm sure you're watching this. And he's a good cricketer. Better than me in the, uh, the local cricket club, which I played for on one occasion. I walked out, I stood at the crease, and I can honestly say that ball came at me a lot quicker than I remember the previous time I played, and I was out first ball. It was, as they say, a long walk back to the bold. clubhouse. Yep, bold, in one. There you go. So, a couple of other things here. So, a couple okay. of people are mentioning horizontally wound spools and oh, yes. horizontal spool pin and even perhaps with uh, spools that are not, hor not horizontally wound sometimes can do better using the spool pin. Very good point. I'm just going to look at Pauline. And Helen rightly says don't forget Pauline. We're not forgetting Pauline but Pauline's, Pauline's not an employee as such. She's, she's part time and she's incredibly helpful and useful and we couldn't do without her. <laughs> but she's not here all the time. And can I also say that actually look, some photos one I took of Pauline this week with and I will post it this afternoon. I took a I think a fantastic photo of Pauline. It's not because it's a it's not a brilliantly taken photo. It's just a really nice photo of Pauline. You can see it Pete. And she has completed on her Amara, because she's a handy filter owner too, and she's completed it on her Amara beautiful feathers and she she brought it in because her sister had pieced it and Pauline had quilted it. Did she mention it to you? Sorry? Did Pauline mention that she quilted on her Amara? No. And quilt? Fantastic. I will share it with you because on pin off quilting I must post it straight afterwards. And also help thank you Helen. And also your quilt Helen. That's two photos I have not posted. Thank you for the reminder. Helen, a wonderful quilt. I took some close-ups of Helen's quilt, which she did at Linda's workshop last October, and Helen has done some incredible work. Plus, one of the giveaways from attending the workshop with Linda, Helen finished the sampler that is by, oh gosh, what's her name? Educator, Ambassador, Ellen, um, you're filming in. Linda Jackson. Oh no, oh, Helen. American. Uh, American. Oh, American. I don't know. Anyway. Recent Ambassador. Um, the practice ones that she does, beautiful, with the feathers. She came over here. 
Sorry. Um, anyway, she did that and it was a fantastic one. Helen has done some too. But Pauline is, yeah, she's a really good quilter. Okay. So Mark has started and he's, um, he's going to be doing a lot of the operations side. Let's talk about events happening a week on Saturday. We will be at Duxford. Jane Halprick. Thank you, Helen. Jane Halprick does some really nice... Uh, practice feather sample things. Um, she does them where they're printed and you can follow along the feathers. And Helen did a lovely job on that, on her moxie. Absolutely fabulous. Because Helen was here a week and a half ago with her friend from Lampeter. Now, Pauline's sister yeah, we'll be doing, uh, yeah, so anyway, that was good. I'm digressing. Pete. There's another photo as well that we could do with posting, Liz. We were talking about photos that need posting, which is the one that I took when I installed Judy's Avanti this week, because it was a perfect example following up from last week's Fat Saturday Live, yes. because Judy uses her movable Avanti from a seated position. She right. sits down and uses her machine, and she can reach the back of the frame comfortably from her standard office chair um, on her Avanti. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, we talked about saddle stools and that was, that was a really good point that Judy made, was that in her regular office chair, and I have done this also with another customer, um, with a little foot frame, she was also using a standard office chair. So yeah, you don't have to have a saddle stool, but you can't use it with casters, Pete, can you? The casters add too much height. So with the standard feet, regular office chair, probably to a pretty high position. So one of these sort of... Yes. Yeah, higher than... These ones don't go particularly high. But some office chairs go a bit higher. And maybe you have to be a bit taller than me. I'm, I'm a short person. Do just tell me? Your microphone's a bit quiet, apparently, Liz. So um, your mic is a bit quiet. It's, it is on. Put it a bit closer. Mm. How's that? Hopefully that works. Maybe it's that big uh, woolen collar that you've got this morning that's Could muffling be like the sound. Ten layers of clothing. I'm not normal, by the way. It's not absolutely freezing here. I'm just a cold person. Um, yeah. So Judy was is able to reach to the back of her frame. So what we discussed last week, when Her Majesty was here was the movable and stationary frames and machines. And if you do come to a demonstration here at our showroom, where we currently have 20 long arms, plus the antique 30 inch, 21 long arms, she who dies with the most long arms wins, uh, th then you can have a look and see and have a look at how it's possible to sit at one of these movable machines. So that's that. Don't forget as well, if you're coming to um, one of our shows that are on this year, check out our shows page on our website, pinholequilting.co.uk. Check out which shows we're going to. We will be bringing uh, most of our long arms to the show, so you can have a go at the Moxie, the Amara, uh, Infinity, and Pro Stitcher on those, and the Capri. So I'm going to demo the Capri in a moment. And Duxford is the first one that we're going to be doing. Let's hope it's not as windy. Uh, I don't fancy driving a trailer, Pete, in these storms. That would not be fun. Uh, Duxford is on the 4th to the 6th of March at the, in um, at the Imperial War Museum in Cambridgeshire. It's pretty easy to find, pretty easy to get to. The parking's really nice. Um, they've got some cafes. There are things to do if you have another half who's always worried about sitting and wondering what he's going to do while you're looking at the quilts. There are some really lovely displays. I had a quick look today with some uh, quilts by uh, the Cabot Quilters and there are also ones by Pastors New Quilts uh, Quilt Group and that's Joy Edgington in Birmingham, her quilt group and also by Gillian Travis and some other ones as well. Check out the promotional leaflet by uh, Grosvenor Shows. There's a link from our email newsletter that I sent out this morning. The other thing is that we've uh, got 10% off Cindy Needham stencils still, uh, all this month. So I've just 
put together a, there's a little sample here, just to show you the kind of times when you might use uh, the Cindy Needham sensors. This is your blank canvas. So, you know, if you've got something like um, a quilt block, it might be, uh, I just imagine this is a pieced block. So you might be using Cindy Needham sensors when maybe you've got piece block, foundation blocks, you might have a star block, you might have a completely blank canvas and you're going to do whole cloth, either square, uh, sorry, circular or square. These are the kind of times when something like the ultimate stencil, which is a really good place to start. This is Cindy's base one. And I'm going to pull it. So this is a set of four stencils, which Liz, I think, will show you in a moment. This is £32 standard price, so 10% off currently. A couple of other questions in. Dybell is asking uh, whether we will have thread at the shows. Uh, we would plan to take thread to most of the shows this year, yes. Di, but we are increasing our thread range and it's almost impossible to take all of it. So yes, we will be taking some thread, but if there's something in particular that you want, then let us know in advance of the show and we can make sure it's there. Um, question earlier from Claire Shortland as to what needle size to use with perish thread. Now I think perish soluble, water soluble thread is a standard 40 weight is it? So it's probably a 16? Probably 16. I, I haven't looked into that actually. I'll check, I'll have a little look yeah, at that. Yeah, we'll, we'll check for you Claire. Yeah, so that's, that's how the pack comes and you can email Cindy to get the PDF or We've got, of course, the 10% off these printed books. And you can either get the one that explains how to use this, which is in here. So for example, the one where I've just shown you, that's the kind of star design, where you can then fill in. And I'm, I'm gonna do a demo on this Capri here in just a moment. So this shows you how you would use this circular stencil to draft a star. Obviously it wouldn't be black fabric, but this is how you would then draft the star. You would draft it perhaps using the acetate and then you can translate that then onto your fabric. So there's there's an example. Oh sorry, am I making a horrible noise? Sorry, it's my microphone. Okay. That should be better. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and there's an example of a, a quilted out mariner's compass using this, this method from Cindy. Now, we w the reason that we're promoting this here in February, it's our fifth anniversary um, of Pinhole Quilting. But more to the point, we've got classes coming up in May and July where there, was, there will be the potential to use some of these stencils. And so therefore, we wanted to give you the opportunity to purchase them earlier on in the year so that you can then have them in advance of the classes. So it's a very detailed explanation of how to use these. So you can get the PDF as an online, but also a printed copy. And this is the one that's really, really valuable. The Ultimate Stencils Design Book. Now we've got this on as an offer as well, 10% off. And this is the one where Cindy goes through in huge amount of detail and fantastic examples. That's, look at this, this is where you've got all examples in here of the different ways of drafting using this ultimate stencil and fantastic ways of bringing in feather designs into your, into your quilting. It's a particularly useful book once you've uh, understood the concept of it. And this huge amount of inspiration on Pinterest as well. So, you know, once, you, once you've got the hang of this, uh, the world's your oyster, really. So Di Bell likes the books, that's great. Yeah. Books are brilliant, she says. Excellent. Oh yeah, because Di, I mean, Di has really taken this and run with it. And, uh, and I know that uh, if Cindy can get over here again, I know that she would love she would absolutely love to do some classes with us. So, we've explained about Cindy, we've explained the concept of this, but also she's got, you know, border designs, and this is all ready to go for me to fill in some practice border designs. 
and Cindy's got the border um, packs as well. Again, there's 10% off Cindy's border. These are ones that I'm going to use for practicing. They're a bit of a blank canvas at the moment, aren't they? I'm not going to do those today, but I am going to have a, a quick go at doing some feathers. So using Cindy's principle, you would, you would then fill, once you've done this and you've drafted it, you could then fill in these designs so you could just do your, your feathers in here, etc. So that's uh, what I really want to talk to you about next is some of the new products. So Pete's been bringing over, while I've been talking, some of the new products we've got for ages, for ages and ages and ages, I've been trying to find the source for this lovely little pen. Our handy quilter owners will love this. When you get a new handy quilter, you get a huge order like this, okay? Which is fine, and this oil lasts you forever, which is great. But when it comes to delivering a single drop of oil, nothing beats the accuracy of this nice little, look at that. So it's called a needle point oil, and you'll see why when you compare when I, the size of that. When I just deliver. Just get You're leaking, Liz. You're I'm leaking. <laughs> So these aren't on our website yet, but they will be soon, very soon. Just got them in. Just got them in. So when you need to deliver just a dot of oil, look, look, just, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's just, just compare it to the nozzle on this yeah. for comparison. If you just hold the two together, Liz, that would be sufficient. Yeah. There we are. Oh, oh. You see, and you, you get this blonk. So, we are, I am particularly. So, I, the first thing I did was open the packet up and write Liz on one of these. <clears throat> jo says that uh, with you sitting at the Capri, it has her wanting to upgrade her faff. Well, Jo, actually, this is a second user Capri. Oh, yes. This very one here, it's just come this in. This is available. This so, is available. less than a year old. Lovely. This is a gorgeous machine. Gorgeous, yes. gorgeous. So Maya, yes, you already have one of those needle point oilers. It works perfectly on your Moxie it as well. It does. And Marie Suzanne says it looks very medical. It does look very does. medical. Don't stick it anywhere no. else, Marie no, we Suzanne. Don't, we don't need to talk about that. So that's the needle point oiler. In terms of maintenance. Yes, Joe, we can send you details. Absolutely. In terms of maintenance, we also got these handy little brushes in. These are, uh, so the oiler will be on our website, that's six pounds, and you can refill it with the oil from the larger dispenser that is provided. Oh, ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. It'll last ages anyway. This is a very handy brush. The one that we've been supplying originally just has this end, but this one is quite good for doing the around the um, bobbin case assembly area for getting all those big bits of fluff out and then around your hook assembly okay that one's three pounds that will be on the website soon but the most exciting thing is the thread obviously so new thread that's come in this week is primo soft so these are all still from the suppliers of glide this is all yeah. by phil tech so this so, is going to talk about Primo Soft. Yeah, first. so the reason that uh, we've gone for this is it, we've got Glide, we love Glide, it's extremely reliable and it's a beautiful thread. But sometimes we want something that's perhaps a little bit more of a dull, a matte finish. So this is a very consistent thread. This is the same colour, this is Lemon Ice, but this is now in Primo Soft. So. It's a duller finish, it comes in a cone. You get to, uh, 2,750 meters. meters on it. It's what's called Tech 35. It's like a, about a 50 weight. So it's, it's slightly, yeah. I mean, it, I think it's very similar, very similar weight really to 
a, a glide. I'm going to do some samples and stuff and yeah. I'll post them online. I can actually see here quite clearly. You can see the sheen on the glide spool on the right. Yeah. And this is the Primo Soft on the left, which looks very much more like cotton. It does. It so has... it's a nice soft finish. So for particular mm. projects where you don't want the sheen, it could be a really good choice. It's polyester. It is polyester. Um, and it has the, the sort of nice feel about it. Yeah, it has that sort of fluffiness. So now, we, I've been using this for ages, Primo Soft. Um, we've been using it as Magma Soft. So it's effectively anybody who's been using Magma Soft in the bobbin has been using Primo Soft. This is what Magma Soft is, okay? And the reason that we originally used it, when I met Kimmy Bruno way back in 2013, I think it was, and we did I did a class with Kimmy, she gave us um, a Primo Soft um, sample as, as Magma Soft. And when I spoke to Kimmy afterwards, after the class, the reason that she was using Primo Soft in her quilts was so that she could have that sort of more homespun look. And, um, and she said that's why she used it in her quilting. Now, I, I stopped it, um, I, you know, the other company I worked at, and uh, we didn't do it originally, um, only because, you know, we've got lots of other things going on, but now, now we've got Mark. Uh, we've got, you know, this, we can do a few more things, so we're stocking Primo Soft, and we've got some beautiful colors. Um, so we've got uh, lovely colours like olive. So Claire's and... just asked if we're stocking them in neutral colours. So yeah. we're only stocking a small number of colours at the moment. So certainly so some neutrals in here. We've got light olive. We've got warm grey. Uh, we've got cool grey. Um, warm grey is five or six. Six, yeah, yeah. six. And uh, the khaki. Yeah. I still don't think your microphone is picking up as it should because it. You sound better when you're close to me, apparently. It's, it's fully in and it's charged. Just put it closer to you, further up your lapel. There we go. I'll put it on my woolly jumper. Yeah, that should be it's, better. I think it's my baffle. It's my baffle. Is that better? I don't know. I think, I think my woolly jumper... There's a mistake. <laughs> no, because I'm nice and warm. And I think actually the other thing is, I think my voice is a bit soft today, uh, for some reason. And it is raining quite hard it's here, so. Absolutely pouring down the rain. So we've got, I mean, lemon ice is absolutely beautiful. So we've got Primo Soft. We've also got in lovely, 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 lovelies, Magna Glide Delight, which is basically Glide pre wounds. Yep, let me take it away. Magna Glide Delights. Magna Glide Delights. We've got lots of colours of these, so it comes in Tons. a tub of 10, is that in a tub? Yes. <clears throat> so this is the 40 weight in a really big selection. How many do we get of those? I can't remember. Sorry? How many do we get? Tons. Oh, there's, we've got quite a few colours in Magna Glide Delights. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to be £13 for 10. £13 for 10. So that's, that'll save you having to wind your own um, glide. It's got the magnet on it. You don't need to take out the spring. Please do not remove your backlash spring in your handy quilter. And that's going to give you consistent tension throughout. Um, I have got the video on our YouTube site of how to tension using magma. Yes, it is. People are saying, yes, it's raining very heavily here. That is what very, you can hear in the background. Very, very heavy. It seems to be getting heavier. I'm trying to talk loudly. Uh, right, next, what else? Is that it? And then I can do some. Well, we've got lots more colours of oh, yeah. soft in oh, yeah. as well. Oh, this was good. Because, so now this is the thing about Magna Soft, and the, re the reason that, uh, that Kimmy was, was very keen on using Magna Soft was that when you're using Glide on the top, which is quite a slick thread, if you ever have a problem with Glide on the top and the bottom, if you do have a problem with that, and some people do, I mean, most people don't, but you've got two slip threads together. Sometimes it's better and it, it works really well because this is a slightly furry thread, the Magna Soft. Um, it works really well with it. 
with Blight on the top, Magnusoft on the bottom, it grabs the thread. And if you're an embroiderer, you will know that if you've got a very slick rayon on the top, embroidery machine manufacturers tend to provide a bobbin fill that has a little bit of furriness to the, to the underside bobbin fill. And what that does is that actually helps those slick fibers off the top thread and it works really well. So Fremo Soft pre-wounds are called Magna Soft and works very well with Glide on the top. Try that. So yes, Claire, you can use it straight in your bobbin, but you have to set the tension differently. Yes, it's like I've... a yo-yo. I've done a video. Um, I'll put it as a link on our Pinnell Quilting Facebook page. And the difference with Deco Bob, Claire, is Deco Bob is an 80 weight bobbin thread. It's not got the magnet in there, so you set the tension in the normal way. Uh, Primo Soft is 60 weight, is it? It's Primo Soft. Is a, well, it says is it 50. Hash. It's like it says 50. It's, it's a 50 text. weight. It's a different system though, because it's a, it's a, it's like a, they say text 35, which is a 50 weight. It's 50 weight. Last thing then. One more thing on uh, bobbins, Liz. We've also oh, yeah. get, got more colours of Magnetlide Classics in. Ah. Now, I just wanted to say, me. yeah, we'll we'll do. A, I think we need to do a post on these different bobbin I think types. A blog post yes. With links to the YouTube. Yes. Because I can put it all in one thing. Then. So this is Magnetlide Classic, Classic, and this is yes. a sixty-weight 60 weight. filament. Yeah, sixty-weight filament. So what this is, is a very fine thread, a bit like a 60 weight glide, which is also a 60 weight filament. And this is lovely where you want a nice bobbin fill. You're not changing the bobbin very frequently and you've got a fine look on the, on the back. And we're doing that in a, in a bigger variety of colors Just now. a few more colors at the moment. Yeah. We, we batch them up in bags of 10, yes. but actually they come in boxes of 72. Yeah. If anybody wants a box, then we can do a special price for you on that, okay. so just let us know. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think white and black come in boxes of 100, so they would last you a long time. There we go. 100 of those, ask us for special pricing. Yes, so let me give you some pricing on that thread. Somebody's asking about pricing. So the, the 3000 meter Primo Soft, 3,000 yards, sorry, 2,750 meter is 17 pounds. Uh, the Magnusoft bobbins, we've stopped them for a while. We've got more colors now. They're 11 pounds for a tub. The Magnaglide Classics, effectively, they're a pound each. We sell them in bags of 10 for 10 pounds. Uh, we've got the Magnaglide Delights, which are the uh, equivalent of 40 weight top thread they're 13 pounds a tub that's it I think for, for yeah. the pricing uh, they're not all on our website just yet we're working on it we're working on it that's what I'll be doing after this so Facebook live as normal next Saturday the weekend afterwards will be at Duxford hmm. Glenis the official advice is no, you can't recycle your pre-wound bobbins, but I'm sure that there are some customers who try to. So the nice thing about this Capri, apart from compared to the Sweet 16, we've got the enhanced lighting. We've got an 18 inch throat space. It's a very fast machine. It's 2200 stitches per minute. I've got it on um, the, uh, oh, I like to be continuous, which means it's going to continuously sew even when I'm stopping. Okay, so it feels more smooth. So stitch regulator is built stitch into the table. In. Yep. This is the inside table. It comes with this particular one is uh, pre-loved. Uh, the customer upgraded to or changed to a uh, movable machine, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, for for recycling. Okay, so Glenn, it's the the Magna bobbins, um, Filtech, the manufacturer, does a recycling scheme, but only in the States. Yeah. So I'm not aware as to how you can recycle the magnetic and plastic core that's in those at all, no, I'm afraid. 
But similarly with the um, deco bob plastic bobbins. There we go. There we go. That's one side of my feathers. And you're using Primo Soft here. I am using Primo Soft. So I'm going to finish doing that. I'm yep. going to post this. Um, it's been nearly done, aren't we? Um, I'm going to post this online. I'll do some using Primo Soft, and I'll do alternating using Glide. And there's a so, request to show the basting stitch on this machine as well. Is, is that uh, possible? Can I do well, you, you could do it on that fabric, can't you? Because it's easy to take out I'm afterwards. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll just finish the stitches here. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, so for doing a basting stitch, I loosen off the top tension by a turn and a half or two turns so it doesn't pull on the fabric. Yeah, you'll see it nice and clearly because it's in bright red. So just talk through the settings as you're doing that list. Two, on the Capri, unlike the Sweet 16, there are actually two types of basting stitch. There is one done by time and one done by distance. So depending on which setting you've got it in, okay? So if I do, oops, if I do this bit, if I do it here, let's put oh, it around. Carol, that's a good idea. So Carol Wood gives her empty bobbins to a local primary school who can't get enough. Yes, I can see that they can be made into all sorts oh, of fantastic yeah, things. That's a great just, idea. Just make sure you don't put stuff on the back of your Capri, okay? <laughs> So I'm going to do needle down, needle up. Okay, just bring up my top, my bobbin thread. I'm going to loosen this off by a turn and a half, so it doesn't pull up too much. I'm just going to secure that initial thread. Now on here, um, I go into the basting stitch by just keeping on going down. So, so half inch. The stitch length. Okay, half inch, one inch, two inch, and four inch. Right, that's because I'm in this particular setting, which is continuous. So if I wanted to do a one inch, let's do half inch, actually, it'd be easier to show you. So it's going to measure it literally by the distance. So this is one option on the Capri. It's going to measure the half inch. Okay. But if I was in this mode, sorry, in manual mode, it's actually going to do it in seconds so it's in b which is basting and it's going to do it by time so it's going to do it based on how so every long. half second yeah. it's putting in and i stitch. can change it by changing it up here so three quarter seconds one second one and a half or two seconds so actually on the capri you've got a couple of options on the sweet 16 it does it by time only but on this particular one you've got two options okay and you do it on a grid system, just like you would on your domestic machine, or if you were just basing a stitch uh, a foot conventionally. Anything else? Uh, not questions-wise, I don't think. Um, so yeah, we've we've sold three second user machines this week, yes. but we've still got lots in the showroom. We've got Avantis, we've got Simplys, we've got yeah. Sweet Sixteens, we've got Capri. Yeah, do you want to just? As well as all the new machines, of course. Actually, just to say, Pete, that um, this, this machine I've got just to make it up here, um, while, while we've got people's attention. This one here, this is a love machine. This is a free love 2012 machine. It's, um, the, the customer has had it for 10 years. Thank you. And it's, it can go into an insight table. If the standard table is what it will come with, but it can be upgraded. It is insight ready, and um, it has got. It's on our. It isn't on our website at the moment because actually the customer came yesterday. I thought that she might go for it. It's only got. Sorry, it's only got. Um, 1.7 no, million. It's got. It's got 3.7. Oh, it's got 3.7 million. It had a. Uh, an upgrade oh, I see. It's okay. got just under, uh, just under, what's I say, three point seven million. So Which isn't much. It's not much. I mean, we have customers who, on the movable machines, will do eight million in a year. So on the sit-down machines, we don't really typically see that sort of quantity because on the sit-down, you're not, you're not making that many stitches. But this is a ten-year-old machine sewing absolutely beautifully. And I'm going to be putting this up on our website soon. 
for sale by the customer when available for demonstration at our showroom. And it's a 2012 machine uh, on sale for £3,000 and it includes over £300 worth of accessories and it includes a brand new hand cut bottle wine as well. That's with the standard table? With the standard table. If you wanted the insight table, the insight table is available for £1,250. Um, so you know, you're looking at a real, a really good discount off the of brand new Okay, um, what else? Oh, and the Capri, that one that I demoed on just now, you saw how beautiful those feathers are how easy it is to sew using the inside table. That one with that side table, 6,800, including the side table, including the casters, and some other accessories, right? Yeah, large so, foot control. That'll be going up on our website soon. That was one that was deinstalled this week. And I'll send information on that machine to those yeah. people that have requested it today. Great. I think there's one other thing that I think we need to just mention, Liz, and that's saddle stools, because we talked about saddle oh, stools last yes. week. And the price is going up by 10%. Our supplier has said that some of his component prices have gone up by 50%. Correct. So there's a 10% increase on all our saddle stools from the 1st of March. But yep. we're getting some in pre-price increase. We are. we are. So act quickly if yes. you want to buy at current prices we will just have a few available yeah we will so yeah do not delay if you're thinking about buying a saddle stool um while stocks last literally at the moment and um, we have pete and i have taken the executive decision we've pre-ordered um a small number um so yeah if you're not uh, certain about which ones you want um please let us know asap I think that's everything for now, but uh, we'll be here next week um, as usual with our Facebook Live the week after, we'll be doing it live from Duxford, we're looking forward to seeing, I know some of our customers will be coming, and we look forward to seeing you there at the show, and uh, we'll be uh, at the Imperial, Imperial War Museum, hopefully it will be nice and calm, um, and uh, wherever you are in the world, take care, happy quilting, and see you next Saturday, bye, bye now.